Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. I just want to quickly shed light to that topic that you see right away on my platform there now. I just want to shed light to it in, co in conjunction with what I have been receiving inside my inbox and what I have read elsewhere. You know, um, to be honest, I, I am forced to talk. I, I, I actually do not want to comment or talk about this thing. But there are some questions that were raised and asked, inboxed last, um, maybe end of the last year. Towards the end of last year, I think there, was a, there, was, there were some questions that came in. Uh, basically, I disregarded those questions because I actually don't like to be talking unnecessarily. You know, I don't like to be talking unnecessarily. But then at the end of the day, because of what I am reading and seeing and hear from here and there, you know, I, you know, basically realize that I have to make some comments. You know, I have to make some comments. Today, you can see what I put out there, but briskly. And you will realize that sometimes late, uh, sometimes last year, I came out to talk about issues about him coming into the United Kingdom, how, how he was refused entry into my HM Queen, Elizabeth country, British land. And to be honest, if care is not taken, that guy will not enter my United Kingdom because I have read it everywhere and I've seen that when you are a pathological liar, you're going to be, it's going to be difficult for you to remember what you have said. But when you are, you see, I don't have problem with, listen carefully, Tokumbo Lagbaye is speaking. I don't have problem with people's sex, people's um, color, people's religion, people's background, people's anything. I don't have problem. I, I, everybody's human being. I have problem with liars. I have problems who cannot, I have problems with those who cannot stand by their words. I have problems who, with people who say one thing and do another. I have problems with people who are not straightforward. You know, or, or, or people that want to perish other people's destiny or people's journey. I have problem with those kind of people. But I don't have problem with religion, with uh, uh, sex of people, with color of the people, anything of the people. I don't have problem with that at all. I have got no problem in that. But I've got problem with pathological liars. You know, constant liars, persistent liars. I have problem with them. You know, I have problem with them in a way. Now, if you if you noticed last time, one of Bobriski's uh, probably is a she anyway, but friend um, introduced myself and Bobriski together and asked me to take on Bobriski's case. So I asked Bobriski to contact me. I asked him to video to video chat me so that I would know it was him at that time. So he did video chat me to be honest with you, and I knew it was him. But what I realized about Bobriski is that when he, what, he would do anything, he would lie at any stage. You understand to get what he wanted to get from you. But then at the end of the day, he told me stories that he was refused because people have inboxed me and saying that, how far? So this is in response to those who have been asking me how far, how far? Be be because I don't want to give myself a way to inbox one people and be talking to different people all the time. That is why I'm doing it in the public, just to respond. And in conjunction to the videos and everything that I've seen, that I've seen, I've viewed out there. So I want to I want to respond. To so all those who are asking me questions that how far, how far. He gave me an instructions to work to get him back into the UK. Because what he did was that he had a visiting visa and he was going to come to United Kingdom to entertain. Now, on a visit visa, there is no way you can come to UK to do entertainment. Entertainment is making money. And a visitor is not allowed to sell to sell business in the UK to do anything, business transaction, to work or do business or, or go to school. So he, 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 he in a way. So I, I, I realized that he's a constant liar. So what, we, what happened is that he gave me instructions and told me what happened at the borders. Yeah, he forgot who I am. He forgot how I, I can easily have access to the borders officers. I don't think he realized that kind of my. I don't think he realized my capacity to access border officers. So when he gave me instructions, I sent him a letter of authority in Nigeria and asked him to sign me a letter of authority for me to be able to speak to the border. So he wrote his name. As you all know, his name is Idrisi Ogunleye or so, whatever. So he gave me that instructions. So we, we, we had a, le a letter of authority signed from him, scanned his back to me in England. 
So I wrote a letter to the borders and said, listen, again, border agency. I have instruction from so so person, but uh, Idris Ogunleye, state of birth, nationality, everything. I, I gave it to them. I'm um, known as Bobriski, you know, that you refuse landing him on so so day, so 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 day. Could you please furnish me all the necessary information, including the interview transcript? And to be honest with you, Boda Agency gave me that respect and they furnished me that information within three hours of requesting. I have taken note of what Bobriski told me in his own personal story. I have notes down. Then what he told the Boda's agencies were completely different. Thank God that I did not disclose what he told me to Boda Agency. I only said to Boda Agency that they should disclose me the interview transcript record. And they did. They sent me the interview transcript record. So I took the transcript record and I read it and I read it. I He gave me the numbers of his agent, you know, the telephone number of his agent and somebody else who wanted to do whatever. So I then contacted the agent. I took some instructions from the agent and the agent told me exactly what they plan to do f with him if he comes to United Kingdom. And um, so I said to Bob Risky, I said, I am not going to charge you now. Because if I charge you, people will say I take advantage of who you are. I said, no, I don't care who you are. I said, the situation here is that I am still talking about like, but yeah, let me get to the bottom of this case and then I will charge you. You will pay me. Now, what happened is that as we were getting, as, because when I got the transcript, when he was shocked that I would get the transcript, that I can get the transcript. So when I get the transcript, he was overjoyed, he was over happy. And he said, oh, I'm going to send you money. I'm going to make you my mom. I don't have mommy anymore. You are going to be my mom. I'm only so, so, so years old. I was only so, so years. I know those all, so, all sorts of bluff. So he said all those kind of things. And when he was going to send money, instead of him to send 150,000 naira as a starting point to the Nigerian account, the boy sent only 50,000 naira. And he's telling me he's a big boy. It's not his big boy. He is the least of my client that I deal with in Nigeria, Caliber. You see, I deal with oil magnates in Nigeria, and they don't joke with my paying of my money to my account. I deal with women oil magnates in Nigeria. I deal with men. I deal with those who have coins to pay me, good coins. I mean gold color coins, not just coins of bronze, you know, not bronze coins. Not silver, real coins. You understand? I deal with those dance. So he, he lied. And then I collected the information and I said to him, listen, Bob Risky, I said, this is the only way forward for us to move forward. <laughs> this is the only way forward that we need to move forward in this case but for me to help you you have to tell me the real stories because you have contradicted yourself with the border agency by telling border agency this story and, and border agency is telling me that story it shows you have lied I said so to correct this situation I need to go into law but you need to disclose to me who you are in this statement and tell me exactly what I need to know to defend the matter <laughs> as if I was telling, talking to a, a reasonable person. And I said to him that, so we, we, I think my office sent him the transcript record. The moment he received the transcript record, knowingly that we have received the secret of him. Wait and see. I was supposed to be traveling into Lagos the same week. So I said to Bob Risky that I'll be traveling into Lagos shortly. So he should arrange a meeting for us to meet. Ladies and gentlemen, would you believe that was the last time I ever heard? I ever heard from Bob Risky again since then. Because he knew I was traveling into Lagos. But Brisky changed everything. But Brisky refused to take Tokumbo's phone num uh, number. I called him one or twice to ask my secretary to call him with my number that we used to communicate so that he would not think that somebody else is calling him. It was my number they used. And the person who called him, my secretary was next to me. So they call him. The guy will not pick up his phone. The phone will ring, 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 ring. The next thing the guy did here, yeah, the guy just took the phone off the radar. <laughs> so... You see, what that guy did not realize is that everybody's not his mate. With all him telling lies and talking rubbish, how much has he got in Lagos? How many houses has he got? 
Is it in, 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 in agreement with those who have taken the, who have blocked him, who have said things about him that he's a liar? I think they were right. Because I do not want to respond to one or two people inbox. That is why I came out to come and say, to come and, you know, respond that I don't have Bobriski's matter in my hand anymore. And let me tell you, for him to come to United Kingdom, he will need it, an intelligent person to handle his matter because he has lied on the planet and he has stepped on toes. And that is why he doesn't even bother himself to come into UK. And let me tell you, he lost money. He lost money. He lost, he lost so much money because they have paid. They have done this. They have done that. But because he has stepped on some people's toes, they blocked him completely to come to UK. And let me tell you, on the agent that blocked him, well, I will put, I will even say that the guy was right because he lied to me. And if somebody have lied to me, I will believe the other party that that person is a uh, the, the the real person that talking to us is a liar. So in this scenario, how can he enter UK when he has a lot of things to clear and he has not cleared it? That is why I'm saying that he's not in my hand anymore. <laughs> You understand? It's not in my life. It, it, it's not in my hand anymore. I am not handling that matter. So people should not be asking me. I say, how far did I not bring him in? He has taken the transcripts that I took from, that I collected from the home office, uh, from the borders. And he knew that they have told me the truth. They have disclosed everything to me. He lied. He told them one story and they told me, and they, uh, and, and he told me another story entirely, you know. You know, he is a pathological liar. And look at this. I was going through and getting some, reading some news and everything. The information came to me now that he lied that his mother had died, has died. He told me as well that he has no mother that is going to make, ah, you are going to be my mom. Luckily enough, you are old enough to be, to give birth to me. Um, you are, uh, you are going to be my mom. You are I'm going to take you as from today and for, you see, when he wants to take something from you, he will use anything to sweet talk you. Don't let that cajole you. I have spoken with him at length. I have chat with him. I've done everything. But for us to meet on one-to-one -on, -one on Grand, because he knows that he is a liar, he switched off. He ran off. He couldn't disclose himself. And he think he's stupid. You know that 50,000, the stupid 50,000 he put in my account. As soon as I landed into Lagos, I, 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 I dish it out. I, I asked my secretary to, to go and collect that 50,000. And I dish it out to those who are begging on the streets of Lagos. A big girl like us doesn't need your 50,000 naira. It doesn't even, it's not even enough for me to buy one tire in Nigeria. My, the, my, the kind of Jeep I'm using in Nigeria, the alloy wheels is heavy. So if, if your 50,000 is gone, it can do better, it would have been good. But your 50,000 naira cannot even do anything. When I spent two weeks in Nigeria, I spent over 2 million. Sometimes, sometimes 1.5 million I spent in my two weeks staying in Nigeria. So we're not in the same class. You're only giving uh, your friend, what is it called, 500,000 naira for doing a, a adini of so 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 borokini in a, or your area or ilori if you if if i was there i would probably put two million naira down and you only put five hundred thousand naira down so check ben iwa but basically now you are not in the class you are somebody with a pathological liar don't spend time on that listen on the average how much do you make a week in 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 a week i make i, I want to be sure so uh, in a week, I make nothing less than seven to six hundred thousand because I sell cream, and my cream full package is two hundred thousand. So most times I sell like two in a week. So did you hear that? You only make bloody six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand in a week, and it's bluffing. Did you hear that? Only make six hundred, seven hundred thousand in a week. That is just over one thousand. That's just a little bit over one thousand. And he's calling himself a big person, big celebrity. Forgetting about the oil magnates in, in Nigeria. Forget about those who have got big, good business, making ten million in in one month. This guy, he's a pathological liar. And I doubt it if he does make that six to seven hundred thousand self in, in in that week that he 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 he, 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 he he's talking about. You know, but it's just over exaggerating himself, you know. So in a week, sometimes I sell three. And um, my shop, I own a shop too. So we make like 100,000, 150,000. Where's your shop? I have a shop at Lake Face One, and I have one at Ozone Cinema. 
Don't let them do shakara to you when they say they have shops at Lucky Face 1, Beseloba Day. You understand? Those shops, some of them are hoeing. They cannot even afford to pay their rent. Those shops that they hold, that they, they are renting at Lucky Face 1, my research have told me that many of them are in debt. They cannot even afford to pay their rent and they are calling themselves a uh, big girl Lagos or big boy Lagos. Not lie. And I've read it elsewhere again saying that his mom is late. And he's just repeated himself now to say that his mom is late. So who is telling the truth? Who is lying? But in conclusion to the reason why I brought this thing up today is to respond back to all those that have been ask asking me how far an update on his coming into United Kingdom. I am not his lawyer and I'm not his agent. The last time I did, I worked for him was to retrieve the transcript from the border agency. You understand? That was the last time, you know, that I responded to him getting this transcript, record transcript of his, his interview with the border agency into the United Kingdom and I gave it to him. And that was the last time I've ever heard from him. So to all those that have been questioning, inboxing and asking me how far and asking for updates, that is the update for you. Be peace off. I have told you I don't discriminate against anyone. I am responding to the public regarding his case because I cannot disclose his case. But I just want the public to know that he is a pathological liar. You know, if he says something here, he will say another thing elsewhere. He's not my client. He's not my client because we have not done anything to make us be client and and the uh, lawyer relationship. But I just responded. So if you like Ayowola B, you can listen. And if you don't like, that's yours. You know. So that is the case. Whoever is under that name, please don't insult anybody and don't insult me here. You know, so just follow the simple mathematics and instruction is that I responded back to the public at large so that people will not say that uh, they've not had anything that I think lawyer Tokumbo is handling his case. I'm not handling Bob Brisky's matter. Bob Brisky's case is not in my hand anymore. Even the agent that is, is claiming that is his agent confirmed that he's a liar. That when he tells you something, you should use your common sense to, to apply to it. I'm a lawyer. I'm a, speak, I'm a motivational speaker. I have every right to do anything I like on my platform. And what I, what I don't think worth it, I will not talk about it. The reason why I brought the Bob Risky case out is to just debunk those who are giving me a dick and asking me an update about him, about his UK uh, visa. He won't, that, he won't get that UK visa easily because he lied too much on his document. And he, I told you now, and I just go and listen to this audio back. He caught the conversation himself. He ended the relationship himself because he knew I was in Lagos. I don't know whether he has done something secret that he doesn't want me to know about. So, and, and I think it was part of his lie that he does, he does not want me to debunk. That's why he, as, immediately he knew that I have landed into Lagos. He disappeared on my radar. But I'm too big to have time to, look, to be looking for a small chick like that or a small client like that. That I, I only got 50,000 naira to pay, 50,100 pounds. When I charge almost how many things per hour in the UK to work. So I don't have time for that kind of cheap commodity or cheap business. So that is why I decided to disregard him and cut him off my system as well. So since then, I've not, but after then, I've spoken with the agent anyway, but the agent does not believe in him as well. They said he's always a liar so that I should apply wisdom in my dealings with him. But I've taken every advice I receive on board and I've cleaned my hand off. And that is Sefine. That's the end of that journey. So you have heard it yourself. You have listened to the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just about Bob Risky. And that's the issue here. So I've got to go, Daddy.